One of the things that's difficult is as many good police officers as there are out there, and there are many, it's not clear in my mind that you couldn't point the DOJ at five, six, seven out of ten police departments and find very similar behavior. Racist emails that are casually tolerated, contemptuous treatment of the citizens, where they're poor, vulnerable, and powerless. And thus, you hope that Ferguson stands as an example of a police department that can and sees the wisdom in changing, but stands as an example for more than one department. I think one of the things that many people will find difficult is the disconnect between the Department of Justice's finding that the Ferguson Police Department has been systematically abusing the rights of a largely minority and poor community, abusing it both in their civil rights, but also uh, in some real ways just fleecing this community of money in ways that create huge damage to their prospects of getting jobs, keeping jobs, staying out of prison, getting warrants. That kind of finding makes one think there should be an immediate reflection in whether or not there should be justice or compensation for the Brown family. But in fact, there's no immediate connection. Keep in mind that in tort law, it's necessary not just to have done something wrong, but for the thing you did wrong to have created the harm that's being sued for. And the harm here is the wrongful death of Michael Brown. The problem the family has is that so much of the evidence is conflicted over whether or not Officer Wilson was justified in self-defense in shooting Michael Brown. And if he was, then there's no obvious connection. I don't say no connection, but there's no obvious connection between the Ferguson Police Department's poor behavior and structural damage to whether or not uh, Officer Wilson was justified in killing Michael Brown, and thus there'd be no wrongful death. As frustrating as that will seem to so many people, it's not clear that one implies the other. So one example of the disconnect between wrongful behavior and tortious damage that one uses, in, a standard example one might use in class, if I'm driving through the streets of New York blindfolded, my behavior is obviously reckless. That is to say, if I hit somebody, then I'll be liable for the damages. But if I'm driving through the streets of New York blindfolded and I don't hit anybody, or if when the day that comes that I actually do hit you, I was driving normally, the fact that my behavior has been structurally reckless before doesn't prove the causal link as to whether or not I'm liable for this death. That is to say, in order to be liable, it has to be true that my tortious behavior, my negligence earlier, is what caused this harm. And here, Officer Wilson's argument is that he caused the death of Michael Brown in a justified way. And thus, unless there can be a Proven, uh, unless it can be proven that he caused the wrongful death, whether or not the police department had been poorly structured and, and uh, systematically violating other civil rights will not be a factor largely in the, in the civil suit of Michael Brown's death. The optimistic part of me certainly thinks it's possible that Ferguson will not just be an example of how things go wrong, but an example of how things can go right. It's worth remembering that there have been more dire instances that felt equally bleak, perhaps even more hopeless, that have come to stand for police departments that can change themselves. The city of Los Angeles, following the Rodney King beating, stood as one of the most traumatic and traumatizing police departments in the country, and is now seen as a fairly progressive and deeply engaged police department with its citizens and with its minority citizens in particular. So one can only hope that if Ferguson does some soul searching and really commits itself to changing that one day it too will be an example of how things can go right.